Now, remember what we, what we read previously in the previous slide. Look at this. I'll remind you of it. He who justifies the wicked, or say that the wicked person, somebody who's done something wrong, who's guilty, is not guilty. Or somebody who is not guilty is guilty. That person is an abomination to the Most High God. God then turns around, even though we're all sinners, that we are justified. God now turns around and he says he does something. He justifies freely. By his grace, through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God set forth as a propitiation, a sacrifice by his blood, through faith. Why did God do that? Why did God justify us freely through grace by Jesus Christ? God did it. He's explaining it now. Folks, when you're reading, when you see stuff like this, this is God explaining what he did and why he did it. When you see words like that or for, all it means is because. All right. God did that to demonstrate, to show, to reveal his own righteousness. Because, he explains it further, in his forbearance, what is he talking about? God did something. Forbearance means his restraint. God restrained himself. What did he restrain himself from doing? He passed over sins. What do you mean God passed over sins? Every sin, every single sin carries with it an immediate penalty of death. Every sin, one sin, one sin's penalty is, listen, eternal physical and spiritual death. One sin. That's it. Just one. You don't need to commit 10. You don't need to commit 50. And it doesn't matter what type. For those of you who wants to say big sin, little sin, no such thing as getting God's eyes. It's all sin. Now, the punishment is based on the gravity of the sin. But the fact that you sin one time, God should kill you right now. He should kill me right now. And you hear me say this. He should have killed our mother so that we would never be born because she was a sinner too. So what am I saying? God, in his forbearance, his restraint, passed over sins that were previously committed. Yours and mine. Adam and Eve and everybody else's. God should have destroyed the entire world. He should have destroyed the angels that sin immediately. But listen to what he said. He wanted to. He, so here's the question. Why didn't God kill the devil immediately? Why didn't God kill the demons immediately? He answers the question right here, folks. Why you go and listen to somebody just ramble off on some tangent when he gives you the answer right here? It's in Romans 3, 21 through 26. If you want to know why he allowed the devil to live, he tells you. If you want to know why he allows sinners to live, he tells you right here. Listen to it again. For being justified freely by his grace. Now he's talking about humans because the angels are eternal spirit beings. They can't. They live in a spirit realm. So the, the laws of the spirit realm is different. Just like if you die, 
you're going to enter that spirit realm and everything is fixed. So if you enter that spirit realm and you're a sinner, you're going to be, you're going to stay a sinner forever and God's wrath is going to come upon you. Now, for humans, all have sinned and fall short. God justified you freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom he set forth as a sacrifice, a propitiation by his blood. Friends, that's the only way sins can be forgiven. Through faith. God did that. Why? He should have killed Adam. He should have killed Eve. None of us should be born. But God had forbearance. Why did he do that? Because he wanted to demonstrate something. What did he want to demonstrate? He wanted to demonstrate his righteousness. How else will God demonstrate his righteousness if there was no sin? That's what he's telling them. He's saying, in order to demonstrate my righteousness, this is what I did. I restrained myself and I passed over sins that were committed. I passed over punishing the sinner. I restrained myself. How did he, how was he able to do that? Right here, through the redemption that is in Christ. The payment was already paid. Jesus died before creation. That's how he was there before creation. God was inside the body of the man that he sacrificed, shed his blood, raised from the dead before creation. This propitiation, this redemption, this grace was given when? Before creation. This is from God's point of view, not earth, not our point of view. This is God telling this story. So he's doing it outside of time. God is saying before creation, this is what, the reason why I have it emboldened so you can understand that this part right here, verse 24 and 25 took place before creation. Got it? Okay. Why are sinners still alive? That's a question to you. They're alive because the blood that Jesus shed before creation allowed God to demonstrate his righteousness. How then did God demonstrate his righteousness? By restraining himself from killing sinners immediately when they sinned. That's how he showed his righteousness. In punishing Jesus, shedding that blood, he was allowed to be forbearing to you and to me. This then, this forbearance, this demonstration of righteousness, then allowed God, look, to demonstrate even further. What is he demonstrating? He's demonstrating at this present time, here today, his righteousness again. What does that look like? How do you know that God is currently demonstrating his righteousness today? And you could have said this during Adam's day, during Noah's day, during Abraham's day, during Moses' day, during throughout all history. This is exactly what God did throughout all human history. What did he do? Listen carefully. 
that God, this he, is God. That God might be just. Mm, just? Yes. He's just when God justifies <laughs> the wicked. The ungodly wicked person. Wait a minute. We just read that that's an abomination to God. It would be an abomination to God if it wasn't for the blood. Now you understand the cross. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world allow God to demonstrate his righteousness, folks. You say, why is that even a word? God is demonstrating his righteousness. Why did he let the devil know? He's demonstrating his righteousness to angels. How? By saving the ungodly. By showing mercy to you and to me. He didn't show that mercy to angels. He showed that mercy to me and you to demonstrate it to who? To the angels. To the angels, folks. Where are you getting that from? I don't have time to go into it tonight. But go read the book of Ephesians to find this specifically. Go to chapter 4 and you'll find out that he is demonstrating it. Through or through humans to the angels. I'm gonna do it. I, uh, man, <laughs> I, forgive me because I'm talking knowing the scriptures, what I'm making reference to in my head. Let me take you there. Watch this. This is what God is doing, and this is what he's talking about, okay? That was this mystery that God was teaching us. Now, and he's going and he's talking about the new person. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is in chapter three, the, the mystery. It's a mystery. So he's talking about the mystery revealed. And this is the, the purpose of the mystery. So remember what we're talking about. God is demonstrating his righteousness. How did he do that? He did it through the blood so that he can show that he's righteous and just when he do exactly what he said in Proverbs. Let's read it again. Let's go back. God did something. God is just in justifying the wicked. God is declaring somebody who is guilty, not guilty. That's what this is saying. He's violating, folks, his own command. Look at this. Proverbs 17, 15. God is doing exactly what he said is an abomination to him. God is doing this. He, whoever justifies the wicked. That's what God just said he did. He justified the wicked. Is an abomination. Look at what he says. He says, he just and justify the one, the wicked person who believes in Christ. He did exactly what he said, don't do. But he was free to do it. How? Through the redemption in Christ. The sacrifice, folks, allowed him, and the shedding of the blood allowed him to do that. Now, I said, 
based on scriptures, that this demonstration was not only to men, but this demonstration of this kind of salvation that he did not show to the angels, he showed it to men to prove it to the angels. Now, it was a mystery. The angels, Peter said, they were looking diligently into this, trying to figure it out, but they couldn't. God hid it from them. Now, watch this. This is the purpose of the mystery. Ephesians chapter three, starting at verse eight. Listen to this carefully. What are we talking about? We're talking about what we just went through in Romans chapter three, verse 21 through 26. Primarily, verse uh, 26. Listen to this carefully. God is demonstrating something through humans to the angels. To me, who, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given to me that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. To make all to see what is the fellowship to reveal. To make all to see basically means to reveal so Paul is revealing something. He's revealing a mystery. Now, what is a mystery in this? In the, is, it, is it like a mystery novel? No. All it is is something that God did not share before this time. That's all a mystery is. He didn't show or tell anybody what Paul is about to tell us. What is it? Which this mystery from the beginning of the ages. So, where was this mystery kept? From the beginning of the ages. He never even told the angels. From the beginning, folks. In the beginning, God. When did it happen? From the beginning. It had been hidden in God. God hid it in himself when he created all things. How did he create all things? He created it through the man, Jesus. That's when the blood was shed, before he created all things. How do I know that? Because it was the man, Jesus, who created it. He can't be the creator, folks, if he wasn't there. He was there. He was always there. There was never a time that he wasn't there. Who? Jesus, the man. What are you talking about, Paul? What mystery that was hidden in God from the beginning of the ages? To the intent. Here's what my intentions was for hiding this in myself and keeping it from everybody and every angel. That now, today, Paul, revealing the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church or through the church. Through the church. So God did it until the church came into being. He didn't give it to Adam and Eve. He didn't give it to Enoch. He didn't give it to Noah. He didn't give it to Abraham. He didn't give it to Joseph. He didn't give it to Moses. He didn't give it to Aaron. He didn't give it to the judges. He didn't give it to Samuel or none of the other prophets. He didn't give it to King David. He didn't give it to Solomon, the wisest man on the planet. He didn't give it to none of those people. God says, I hid it from the beginning in myself for the purpose, the intent that I can make it known. Make it known by whom, Lord? Only through the church. So what did you want to show through the church? And why did you hide it all that while just so the church can come into existence? Yes. 
You know, what did you want to do with it, Lord? Who did you want the church to show something to? To, here it is right here. To, you see, right there. I want the church, the church, to show something, this manifold wisdom of mine, to the principalities and powers. Where are these principalities and powers? They're in heavenly places, folks. Who's that? That's the angels. All of them. Good angels, holy angels, and demons. God is using the church. What do you mean using the church? Go back to Romans 3.26. He's justifying the wicked who are an abomination to him. And God is doing exactly what he said nobody should do. He's pointing it out to principalities. Are humans principalities? Of course not. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but, but with who? Principalities and powers. And rulers of the darkness of this world. In where? Heavenly places. Man, there are no men in heavenly places. Talk about angels. God is using the church to show his righteousness to the angels according to, listen, this is so glorious, to the eternal purpose, God's purpose, which he did what? I accomplished something. How? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. What did he accomplish? What we read in Romans 3, 21 through 26. That's what he accomplished. In whom we now have boldness and access. You have bold access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore, we don't lose heart. No matter what comes our way, tribulation, sufferings, none of that stuff. None of that bothers me. Why? Because I got the glory back. That's yours and my glory. What is Christ? Christ. Christ. Now you got it. Good. Okay. That's what he was talking about, folks. This is so beautiful. This is glorious. Well, what does it show? It show God's righteousness, not his love. God's love could never do this. What did it? God's wrath. God's wrath was poured out on this man, Jesus Christ. It wasn't God's love that killed his son. His love sent the son. His wrath is poured out on his son. 